Section 2.4, complex numbers. So a definition of complex of a complex number is a number in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. Now i is equal to the square root of negative one, at least that's how it's often written. Another way to say this would be that i squared equals negative one. Okay, those are, for all intents and purposes, we're gonna deal with, those are equivalent. So what happens is that we have this definition that I'm gonna give you that we'll use a couple of times, and that is the square root of negative a. The square root of negative a is equal to i square root of a. So the square root of the negative portion of that radicand, what's being taken the square root of, it's underneath the radical, the negative portion of that becomes an i brought out. Okay, so we see this in application when you say express the square root of negative nine in standard form. Well, that would be i square root of nine, which would be three i. Now, the standard form of writing a complex number is actually saying something like a plus b i. So that would mean this is zero plus three i a plus b i, where the a is zero and the b is three. So that is sufficient, but that's what it really means when it's a standard form. Now, plot the complex number three minus four i in the complex plane. To do this, we have to draw a new set of coordinate axes here, where this is our imaginary axis, and this is our real axis. Imagine you're in the real axis. This functions just like our coordinate axes, the Cartesian plane that we're used to, except the real part, the real part and this imaginary part, okay, the real part is three. So I go to three on my real axis, and my imaginary part is negative four. So I to go down to negative four, on my imaginary axis. And there is how I'd plot the point three minus four i. Add or subtract is indicated, so we jump to a new piece of information we're gonna use. Three minus four i plus quantity two plus five i. This comes down to combining like terms. If you distribute, remember there's always an understood one there that we can deal with. If we distribute that, that is three minus four i plus two plus five i. Okay. So what we end up doing is adding the imaginary parts and adding the real parts. If we add the real parts, three plus two, we get five. If we add the imaginary parts, negative four plus five, we get plus one. So plus one i. Similarly with subtraction, what we do is we subtract the real parts and then we subtract the imaginary parts. So for the real parts, negative five minus negative 11, it's gonna be a positive six. And subtracting our imaginary parts, seven minus two, will give us five. So our solution here is six plus five i. Imaginary and our real parts. Next, find the product, four parentheses, two plus five i. This is going to work just like multiplying polynomials. We treat the i like it's its own term. We'll distribute the four. Eight plus 20 i. Just keep the real and the imaginary parts separate and we're good to go. Okay, example five, multiply these two, just like we did there, except we're going to double distribute. Now keep in mind that i squared equals negative one. That is a fact that will come in very helpful in our simplifying here. So we will get eight minus 20i plus six i minus 15i squared. 
So the I squared term will is a negative 1. I'm going to write all of the steps here that I'm doing. Plus 6i minus negative 15 because that is going to be negative. Why don't we do this times negative 1. There, i squared is negative 1. Which means we have 8 minus 20i plus 6i plus 15. Now, combining our real and imaginary parts there, 8 plus 15 will be 23. And our imaginary parts, let's uh, underline those differently, should be minus 14, minus 14i. I said we sort of, tr we treat it like we're combining like terms when we do that. And that's it. All right, find the complex conjugate of each number. All right, well, the complex conjugate, let me define what that means. All right, conjugate. All right, the complex conjugate of the number a plus bi, okay, is going to be a minus bi. So to find the complex conjugate, you take the opposite of the imaginary part. All right, so this conjugate, I can't say equals there, my conjugate is 2 minus i square root of 5. Take the opposite of my imaginary part, and that's it. Right, part b, this is equal to 0 minus 1 half i. Just writing that zero in there. So the conjugate is going to be zero plus one half i, or just one half i. So our conjugate is one half i. Now the conjugate comes in handy when we go to divide, okay? Because what we're actually going to do is multiply by something. So let's divide two plus five i divided by four minus i. So rather than use long division or some similar thing, what we're going to do is multiply by the conjugate. And this is based on my denominator here. So I'm going to multiply by 4 plus i divide, multiplied by, divided by 4 plus i. And then we'll multiply here. So this would be 8 8 from here to here, plus 2i, plus 20i, plus 5i squared, which again, remember that's actually going to be minus 5 there. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply the denominator as well. So this will be 4 times 4, or 16, plus 4i, so 16 plus 4i, minus 4i, and minus i squared. Okay, now we're going to simplify our numerator and denominator. The numerator, we're going to have 22i. Now this part right here, the i squared is going to be negative 1, so this will actually become minus 5. So if we combine those two, that will be 3 plus 22i. The denominator, both of these terms cancel out. And this term on the, on the end here is going to become a plus 1. So this is divided by 17. So what we're going to write is 3 seventeenths. We're going to divide everything by 17 plus 22 over 17i. That is the quotient when we divide those two. And I suggest that you rewind and walk through some of these because we're covering a lot of different things with these, but they all sort of come together into, once we get to our assignment, these things will all come together. So we need to 
feel comfortable with the examples that are here. Now the last example that I've got here is evaluate i to the 18. Now before I do that, I want to do a little bit of an exploration over here. i to the first is just i. No surprise there. i squared is negative 1. That's by our definition. i cubed, if we multiply negative 1 times i, that's what we're doing here, that is negative i. And i to the fourth, okay, times i there, is going to be positive 1 because i squared will be negative 1. So we get a positive 1 there. Now i to the fifth is i. i to the sixth will be times i again. That is negative 1. And we have a pattern. These cycle. Every four, every four, so i to the seven is negative i, i to the eight is positive one. So every four powers of i, it cycles back to one. So this is a good fact to remember whenever we are looking at these. Every four of them, it's going to be i. So it actually doesn't matter. If this problem said i to the 50, we would say, well, how many times how many sets of four have we multiplied? All of those are just one. And then how many are left? How many are left? And we can then look at the first four powers and figure that out. So generally what we want to do is take that number, that power, and write it as four times something plus something. Okay, so in this case, four divides into 16, or into 18, four times to get 16 with two left over. So 18 divided by four is four with a remainder of two. Which that means I can write this as i to the four times four plus two, which based on our exponent properties is i to the fourth to the four times i squared. i to the fourth is just one times i squared, so this will be equal to negative 1, which is i squared. So actually, let's add that step in there. So I want to end with the example that I just said. Example 9, we'll make evaluate i to the 50. Let's add this one in there. So 50 4 goes into 50 12 times. That would be 48. Okay, uh, let's let's change that just so it's just so it's different. Let's make that 51. We want a different answer than the last time. So 4 goes into 51 12 times with a remainder of 3. Which means this is i to the 4 times 12 plus 3. I to the four, I to the fourth to the twelfth times i cubed again from our exponent properties. This is one, so this is one to the twelve times i cubed, which is i cubed. Based on our chart over here, i cubed is negative i, so the answer here is negative i. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this section on complex numbers. Now, something to remember, these are going to come up again when we work with some quadratic equations. Because the reason complex numbers exist, or the main reason that people agree they, they come up, is because of this quadratic equation. If you try to solve this, you end up taking plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which based on our definition is plus or minus the square root of, nope, just i, plus or minus i. This equation, someone said, hey, this equation doesn't have any solutions. Why not? And that's where the complex numbers come up. So as we get into quadratic equations, some of these properties are going to come back and we're going to have to be able to, to be comfortable with them.